So I'm happy to introduce Bert Jackson, who is Director of Community Engagement, um, involved in the Blue Economy Project at the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce. Bert. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Tina. Thank you all for being here today and, and greeting me. As Tina said, I'm Bert Jackson. Uh, I work with the Cape Cod Chamber. I also work with the Cape Cod Technology Council. And occasionally you might even see me out playing some jazz somewhere. So I've got a lot, wear a lot of hats here on the Cape like a good Cape Codder. Um, I thought what I'd do to start is I've got a, a very short video that sort of answers the question, what is the blue economy? Just to sort of set the table for us. Let's talk about something called the blue economy. You're probably wondering, what is a blue economy, right? Well, to start, it's everywhere around us. Water, that is. Cape Cod is surrounded by water, meaning you can't travel very far without encountering some of our 559.6 miles of coastline, or one of the Cape's 365 fresh... We'll talk about that number in a minute. Moreover, the entire Earth is 70% ocean, and when you add in every river, lake, pond, stream, estuary, glacier, you realize it's a world of water. Now, think about your own day-to-day -day life. While you're driving to get groceries, are you passing any rivers or marshes or a beach? Do you go over any bridges? When you're out to eat, do you enjoy having fresh local seafood? Have you ever rented kayaks for a day or gone deep sea fishing or taken a ferry to the islands? If it hasn't clicked yet, for much of Cape Cod, the water environment is what drives the economy, the blue economy. Meet Scott. He owns and operates a fishing boat out of Chatham with his two brothers, catching cod and haddock. Every day they bring in high-quality fresh fish, which in turn gets sold to local buyers. Some of their catch might find its way up to Boston, but it's more likely to end up at your local market or seafood shanty. And because Scott buys his bait and his ice and fuel from local vendors, his profitable blue economy venture also supports other businesses around the region. Scott also relies on a sonar system that was developed and manufactured in Belmont. Recently, he was asked to take part in a fishing industry study being conducted by local oceanographic scientists. Scott's children participate in summer science camps where they learn by pulling plankton nets through the coastal waters to count primary productivity. His nephew is going to be a graduate this June with a degree in marine engineering, and Scott's loving wife, inspired by the coastlines which provide her husband a career, is a renowned plein air painter who captures the marshes and the dunes of Cape Cod on canvas. You see, the term blue economy is really just a frame, a way to visualize, think about, and discuss the lifeblood of our region. Water makes this a world-class destination for visitors and residents alike, ensures prosperous summers, and a vibrant year-round population that has access to top-notch goods and services. Every person in the industry on Cape Cod is affected by the water. We must properly use this valuable resource to ensure a sustainable future, not only for our economy, but for the environment. This is an opportunity to start that discussion on how we go about doing so. Thanks for watching. Okay. So I'm here today to talk to you about the Blue Economy Project. And we've got a lot of terms here today. We've got Blue Economy Project, the Cape Cod Chamber, Blue Economy Foundation, and I'm going to sort all that out for you going forward. But what really comes down to is that water is our way of life. And in terms of that play on word, think about the kind of things um, that we use as water-related terms for, for talking about things like uh, a rising tide uh, lifts all boats or uh, trickle-down theory. All these things relate to water and it's, water is so much a part of us. So let's talk a little bit about the, the various economic eras that we've had in the Cape Cod region. And when I talk about the Cape Cod region, I'm also talking about Southern Plymouth County and I'm also talking about the islands because we're all interconnected economically. People go across the bridges. Uh, some people live in Plymouth and come to the Cape to work. Some people live on the Cape and go to Plymouth to work. So as part of our study area, that's the area that we talk about. So uh, when Tina was ref referencing over a thousand miles of coastline, we're referencing that whole study area that includes Southern Plymouth County and the islands. Uh, Cape Cod is about 550 miles 559 miles of coastline. When you add in the other areas, it adds up to over a thousand. So when we started, well, before, before Europeans were here, there was a native blue economy that was happening. Um, native peoples were here, they were fishing, they were interacting with the water, uh, they were building craft that went on the water. Uh, and then Europeans came, colonization began, and 
a big uh, uh, seafaring aspect of the blue economy was here. And that was a big part of the economy. Uh, we managed, because we're so good at this, we managed to really decimate the resources in the Cape Cod region. We overfished it, we chopped down all the trees, and so by the end of the 19th century, Cape Cod was a wasteland. People were exiting Cape Cod, the population was, go was reducing. Um, it was considered a, a vast wasteland by the state, and it was the, the thought of Cape Cod was, well, there's nothing there except mosquitoes. If you think the mosquitoes are bad now, I can only imagine what it was like then. <clears throat> so about, 20, about 100 years ago, um, the state had a plan to build tourism as the Cape Cod as a tourism destination. Uh, the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce was founded in 1922 uh, as, a, uh, as a vehicle for doing this. And over the past 100 years, we've been extremely successful at making Cape Cod uh, a world-class tourist destination. We have visitors from all over the world. Uh, millions of visitors come every year to visit our beaches, our coastline, uh, to go boating. <coughs> Excuse me. So things that are water-related, blue economy-related, are very much a part of the blue economy, a part of the, the tourism economy that's here. Um, but what's next? So what are the rails of the economy on Cape Cod now? Well, healthcare is one of the big rails of the economy. Our, our tourism visitor-based economy is, is a, one of the big rails. So we were thinking, what's the next big thing? You know, the chamber's coming up on 100 years. What's the next big thing? And with what's happened locally with, you know, the, the realization that we have this culture of blue among us, it seemed that focusing on the blue economy as the next rail of our, of our future is the way to go. And if you look, you will see blue economy initiatives happening all around the world. When we were doing our initial study, we found blue economy, several blue economy initiatives around the country, but also in places as far away as the Seychelles Islands and in New Zealand and Australia. So this idea of a blue economy, this relationship that we have to the water and the ocean is not unique to Cape Cod. Other areas around the world are recognizing that. Okay, sir? So a little bit of history on the blue economy project. Uh, the Cape Cod Chamber in 2014 had a strategic plan concept about this, what this new idea, this blue economy. And I don't know how much you know about the Cape Cod Chamber, but I feel it is not your typical Chamber of Commerce. It is certainly a business organization, but uh, the Chamber is very committed to regional issues, uh, environmental issues, uh, sociological issues on the Cape. So everything from housing to wastewater, um, uh, these are all important issues to the Chamber and, and we focus on those uh, to help build the quality of life you know, in the region. It's one of the, it's, I think it's one of the premier regional organizations uh, that we have here. Um, in 2015, we applied for and got a Seaport Economic Council grant to create a plan around this idea of a blue economy. So what, what can that be? So with that plan, in 2016, the Blue Economy Project was initiated. They brought myself on, uh, I'm a part-time consultant to the Chamber, and they brought my colleague on, Leslie Ann McGee, uh, as the program coordinator for the Blue Economy Project. And Leslie Ann is amazing. She is the, also the Assistant Director for Marine Robotics at the Center for Marine Robotics at uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. And they're doing some amazing work there in marine robotics, which we'll probably touch on at this point. So we spent 2016 and part of 2017 doing listening sessions all throughout the Cape Cod region in Plymouth, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard. Um, we, we'd bring people into a room like this, we'd buy them pizza, and we'd just have a conversation. What's your impression of the blue economy? And I'll tell you one thing that we learned is where all the best pizza places are in the region. <laughs> I think Red Barn in East Ham is the winner. That's the one that we like the best. Um, we, heard a lot, we heard a lot of great information. So we took that information, we brought it back, we, we gathered data from, um, from NAICS codes, from, 
from other uh, data sources from the Workforce Investment Board. Uh, we crunched that data and we produced an implementation plan, which you can see on our website at bluecapecod.org. Uh, it's 50 pages of wonderful economic development type reading and we have a couple hundred pages of appendices that go along with that. So it's a lot of good data in there, talks about what's happening in the blue economy in, in the region, and also there's a plan going forward for what are things that we can be doing, not only as the chamber, but any organization. The blue economy is not owned by the Cape Cod Chamber or anybody, it belongs to all of us. So if the Association to Preserve Cape Cod has a blue economy project, please, Go forward, we will support you in any way that we can. Call it the blue economy, we'll be happy to promote it under our umbrella of the blue economy. So this is not all about us, this is really about all of us going forward. So at the end of 2017, at the, um, at the, uh, uh, the Quiet Bay uh, Coastal Conference in December, we presented the Im implementation plan. We presented our new video, which I'm gonna show you at the end. And in 2018, we got, we got off and running with some new projects, so, Bill. As I mentioned, water as our way of life, this became our tagline because we are so imbued with the, this relationship we have, the culture of blue. Has anybody been to Hawaii? So you know in Hawaii, they talk about the spirit of aloha. And if you haven't been, it sounds like a touristy, kitschy thing, but if you've been, you know the people that are there, they believe it. I mean, this is something that is really in their hearts. And I believe that all of us who are here, we are here because we have a relationship with the water. We want to look at it, we want to be on it, we want to be in it. We, we have a, a really visceral relationship. Otherwise, we could live in a mountain state. Bill? So when we're looking at the blue economy, we, we look at shades of blue. So at the center of this is the dark blue economy. These are the industries that are in the water. So these could be commercial fishing. There's, there's about eight categories, and if you see the brochure, you'll see those categories listed in the, in the brochure. Um, there's you know, commercial fishing, aquaculture, marine robotics, uh, uh, transportation, et cetera. These are all the industries that are right deep blue. They're deep, deep in the water. The next is the medium blue ring. These are the folks that are here, they may not need to be here to, to sustain their business, but they, they serve the, the dark blue economy. So these could be fuel providers, mechanics, etc. And then the light blue is the rest of the economy. Remember I was talking about trickle down? Well, all that, when, when they were talking about Scott, the fellow with his uh, fishing business, it, you know, his, the, the revenue that he makes from that, he goes out in the community and spends that. He may go to McDonald's and buy a, a Whopper with it. Is that the right place? I don't go there. <laughs> Burger King. He's going to go to Burger King and buy a Whopper. And, and, you know, Burger King can be anywhere, but that money that he is being spent in Burger King in that day is coming from the deep blue economy. So here's some numbers. Cape Cod, this was at the end of 2017 when we did this. Uh, about 1,872 businesses, 20,000 jobs. Um, it represents about 12% of the region's workforce. This is medium blue and dark blue. That was your question? <laughs> um, uh, does it, NAICS codes, these are the, the um, I forget what it stands for, but they are national industry standard codes that the government uses to categorize businesses. Um, there's several thousand of them, and we pulled about 818 of them uh, that represent those blue economy areas. Almost one and a half billion dollars in gross revenues. Over a thousand miles of coastline, we already described that. So 11% of our gross regional product is dark or medium blue. 6% of it is dark blue, so about half of that. And since the turn of this century, since the year 2000, we've seen the number of blue establishments increase over 42%. Employment has, in that sector has increased 50%, and payroll has increased 111%. These are the trends that we like to see. And these are the trends that are telling us that focusing on the blue economy is a way to build sustainability in our region. 
because I was having a conversation with Bill offline before we before we started. You know, a couple of the big of the big um, challenges that we have here on the Cape: housing. Housing is expensive. Housing is homogenous. We only, you know, single-family homes are are us. We you know, there's not a lot of density in housing in our region. And then having jobs that allow people to, that support wages that allow people to live in, in the housing that we have. So those are two of the main challenges we have. So perhaps with some of this effort in the blue economy to bring, to bring sustainable wages up and more opportunity, it'll be easier for people to, to come in and, and afford to live here and stay here and have sustainable lives here on Cape Cod. So here's some of the data. Over 1,000 miles of coastline, 118 NAICS codes, 1,872 businesses, lots of, lots of stuff that's happening here. Go ahead, sir. Again, reiterating what we saw before, large increases. And Trisha asked me to speak to aquaculture a little bit, which is one of the big industries here in the region. So uh, this data comes from the uh, Cape Cod Cooperative Extension. You can actually go to their website and read a little bit about uh, some of this information. Um, in Barnesville County in 2016, we had almost 250 shellfish farms, 200, uh, 629 acres, almost 20 million oysters. That's a lot of oysters. Almost $11 million in revenue uh, for, the, for the oyster growers. Another 5.3 million hard clams, cohogs, which is another 1.2 million. It's a huge industry here for, for Cape Cod. And Look at some of the events that are hap have happened around this. There's the Scala Festival, there's the Quahog Festival, and the Wellfleet Oyster Festival, which I was at uh, a couple months ago. And what a, what a celebration of this part of our blue economy. You know, over 20,000 people coming through, uh, hundreds of thousands of oysters are sold you know, at, at the Oyster Fest. It's incredible, just the volume of oysters that are grown. And, Oysters are great for cleaning water because one of our other big challenges is our wastewater. And we've got, we've got um, nitrogen flowing into our estuaries and our embayments, and oysters are really great at cleaning that up. So having more and more oysters out in our waters is something that is uh, going to help with that. That's sir. This gives you a sense of, of where, how many licensed shellfish growers there are in, in Massachusetts. Look at that orange area, that's Cape Cod. The majority of the licensed shellfish um, growers are here on Cape Cod. Go ahead. And in terms of acreage, because some of the offshore ones are a little bit bigger, we still represent over half of all the shellfish acreage and production in the state of Massachusetts. And here's a look at the growth. Look at that. From 2011 to 2015, the growth, in, and that's in Massachusetts overall, but that's also, excuse me, reflective of what's happening here on the Cape. You know, shellfish is exploding. The, and, and with the work that organizations like Wellfleet Spats, Shellfish Protection, Shellfish Promotion and Tasting, that's what that stands for. Uh, and also Spat is baby oysters, if you, if you didn't know that. Um, you know, they've done a great job at, at, at marketing the oyster, and well, the well-fed oyster for them, but it, it, rising tide lifts all boats. And these, um, the, the promotion that has happened with oysters has made the, uh, the sale of oysters just, and production of them just boom. Go ahead, sir. So we're very tied to the past with the water. And with a lot of the, what we've done, we, we want to honor the past, but we're really looking at the future. So we're looking at what we're doing is not just for next year or the next five years. We're looking at this as a generational project, which, is, which will reflect in some of the initiatives that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Sir? This is key to what we believe, that the environment is our economy. Has anybody seen... Um, photos or video of the green waves washing up in Florida from a few years ago. There was like an algae bloom in the, in the water and you had green waves crashing on the beaches. That's not the kind of press that we need here on Cape Cod. We need to take care of our environment and 
And, and if, we are, if we don't, then our economy is shot. So the environment has to be the top priority for that, and that's a big, a big part of what we believe as we work to attract new business here, new, new entrepreneurial ideas. We want to see entrepreneurial um, activities that are going to reflect this sentiment. These are the themes that we have for, for our Blue Economy project. We want to promote a vibrant maritime and technology economy. We want to have a healthy economy, a healthy environment, because that equals a healthy economy. And we want to have a prepared and educated workforce for the future. Again, looking ahead. So we have really two buckets of effort that we work on. One is economic development. This is, you know, how do we grow, how do we grow the, sh the shellfish industry? How do we work with marine robotics? How do we, how do we take the, what, where are the gaps and how do we find the resources to fill in those gaps? These are things that are, we're working on from an economic development standpoint. The second thing is regional identity. We want Cape Cod to be known as a center for blue economy. I was talking with Yuki Honzo, who runs, uh, she's the CEO or COO of McLean Research Labs in Falmouth. And they build all sorts of uh, underwater sensing devices. Yuki says, Cape Cod is the epicenter of marine robotics in the world. So all those devices that the Woods Oceanographic um, Organization, or the Woods Hole Oceanographic um, Institution is building, that McLean is building, that smaller companies are building, we are the epicenter of that. We are recognized as the world leaders for this. The, um, the Remus that Huey built uh, was licensed to a company called Hydroid. It's in Pocasset, I believe. And they are now um, building autonomous underwater vehicles for the Navy and for other researchers. And they employ over 200 engineers at their facility in Picasso. Excellent paying jobs, really helps sustain that blue economy. We want to see more of that. We want to see more of that. And, and a couple of, a couple of uh, side notes. Did anybody ever see the, the shark cam video where the great white shark is following an uh, autonomous vehicle and then it disappears for a minute and then all of a sudden it comes up and grabs the vehicle? That was a Remus that, that Huey built. And, Sometimes when they're doing uh, presentations, they actually show that, and you can see the teeth marks in it. Oh, yeah. uh, the, other, the other Remus story is that um, when the Air France jet crashed in the Atlantic, sadly, uh, about 10 years ago, it was Dr. David Gallo from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute who used a Remus 6000 to go and explore the ocean depths to find the wreckage of the aircraft. So the Remus 6000 can go to 6,000 meters or about 18,000 feet. And so that was, you know, again, uh, technology that was developed here in Cape Cod used for this, you know, internationally recognized ex expedition. So building regional identity about who we are, um, both in terms of broadcasting it to the world to say, we're here, we're here for opportunity, we're here. If you are an entrepreneur that wants to start a blue economy type business here that's gonna be compatible with the values that we have, we'd love to have you. Let's see if we can help connect you with some resources that are going to make that happen. Are you a student that wants to grow up? Are you, do, you, do you live here as a, as a young person? And do you want to grow up and be able to sustain yourself here? That's part of our regional identity. Do you live here, as all of us do? Do you live here and want to learn more about how the water drives our economy and, and maybe have some greater appreciation for the people who are doing the work in the blue economy and be able to say, you know, Thanks for going out on that scary fishing boat and bring, bringing my dinner back for me. That's part of that. It's all part of that. So we're, we have some projects that are pretty cool that we're working on with that. So we are one part of regional planning that happens here. So we work very closely with other regional organizations. We work with the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, we work with the uh, Barnstable County. Uh, we work with the Cape Cod Commission, and all of this is all part and parcel of trying to get, move this, this initiative forward. We can't do it all by ourselves. Uh, there are partners who are, uh, believe in this idea and are helping us move this forward. So here's some ongoing initiatives that we're working on. Uh, one is something that's called Blue Connect. This was uh, 
funded by a grant from the, from the uh, state. And with it, we were able to buy, uh, build a new website. But we're building a, a database of blue economy related businesses in the area. And those blue economy businesses, uh, you're gonna be able to do a search of them, search by category, et cetera. The idea being that anybody who has curiosity about looking for, about what's here, you can see that. Um, if one blue economy business is looking for resources, there's a way for them to find it and look it up as, as a, um, from another standpoint. Um, we're also working on developing uh, an entrepreneurial portal, portal where entrepreneurs can come in and connect to resources and also a, a job portal. We're not gonna list jobs ourselves, but listing you know, where to find blue, blue economy employment in the region, whether it's through Woods Hole, whether it's through um, uh, Marine Biological Labs or any of the other organizations that often do hiring in the blue economy area. So we did a survey, we've done this twice. This is called, um, in very economic development sense uh, speak, the uh, grade six through nine intentions and perception survey. <laughs> We need some marketing people to help us with that. Uh, but what this was, this was a survey that was done to about 2,500 students throughout the Cape Cod uh, region, which include Plymouth and, and, and the islands, and, and students in grades six through nine, to get a sense of what is their perception of the blue economy? What do you think about the possibilities? Have you thought about the blue economy? Do you know what the blue economy is? So we showed them the whiteboard video. We're gonna show, we showed them the video I'm gonna show you at the end uh, to give them a sense of you know, what we think it is, and then what do you think? And there's a lot of great data that we got out of this. We worked with the UMass Dartmouth Public Policy Center in developing the survey, so it's, uh, there's a lot of academic data behind it in terms of and how it was put together. And the results are on our website. Um, students in that, in that uh, age group, surprise, surprise, a lot of their information comes from their parents. So that's actually good to know. I was thinking that parents were losing their grip a little bit. Um, I think if I were a parent, I'd be losing my grip. Um, so there's some great data there. We're in the second year. We're going to do the third year of this in the fall of 2020. We, the first two, first two years we did it in the springtime. We found that it was uh, conflicting with all the other testing that they have to do. And it was, it was difficult to get the schools on board with uh, passing this off to the students. So we think in the fall it's going to be better. So fall of 2020 will be year three. So we'll see what kind of results we get for that. Hopefully we'll get a lot more. I'm really excited about this one. This is, we're about to do our second waterworks in January, on January 7th. So we had our first waterworks uh, last year, well last, earlier this year in January. This is a Blue Economy Career Day for high school students in grades 11 and 12. So we invited all the high schools in the region to participate. We had about 300 students come to the Cape Cod Community College. They met with over 50 Blue Economy employers and was spread out all over the campus and the kids had a great time. They were very engaged with all the Blue Economy employers. Uh, the employers were thrilled. Some of them hired some kids on the spot for, for summer jobs and there, there was such a great excitement about it. So this year we've increased our capacity. We're inviting up to 500 kids and we're, we've already got 500 for, for January 7th. Um, again, looking to have about 50 Blue Economy employers and have another great day with the kids. So if this is a way for us, again, to be looking to the future and building that prepared and educated workforce for the future. A couple of other initiatives that we're working on. One is the Blue Wheelhouse, which is a way to help entrepreneurs get from idea to a place where you know, they can actually go out and get funding. One of the terms that is used often when you're in, the, uh, in that uh, idea development process is the valley of death where you've got an idea, but you don't have enough money to bring it to the, next, to the next spot, and no one's going to invest into you until you get to here. So how do we help fill in that gap? And so this is part of what the Blue Wheelhouse is doing, is to have some, some systems and ideas in place and maybe help find some money to help people do that. Um, the other thing is, again, talking about money, we established our own foundation. We have the Cape Cod Blue Economy Foundation. It is a 501c3. We were, we were organized at the end of 2017. Uh, this, the foundation's mission is to help raise money for us to be doing this work. If anybody would like to donate, please feel free. It's almost the end of the year. This is the time.
you can go right to our website. Um, so, that's, so that's some of the work that the foundation is doing. And then finally, this is a project I'm very excited about called Expedition Blue, talking about building a regional identity. So we received a, a, a generous grant from the Seaport Economic Council, it was a grant of $1 million, to build a series of observation decks throughout the Cape Cod region that help tell the story of the blue economy. This is a, a prototype of, of one. Uh, this is just a rendering, it's not real. So if you go down to Falmouth Harbor, that won't be there. Um, <laughs> But the folks that designed the, who did the rendering, they did a great job there. Um, so the idea is that there would be a network of these, there would be a, a responsive website that ties it all together so that whether you are a student, whether you're a resident, whether you're a visitor, whether you're an entrepreneur, here's like some physical things you can go see and experience the blue economy. So we've been working with towns to have, uh, to have sites. Uh, they've been submitting sites to us for ideas for Expedition Blue. Uh, we've been working with towns from Provincetown to, to Bourne, and although Bourne needs to get on the stick, so someone needs to, if you know Glenn, Glenn Cannon, give him a call and tell him Bert's looking for him. <laughs> I, I, I knew Glenn when he worked for uh, the Patriots, so he, he, know, he knows me. Um, this is a way, I think, for us to really bring the blue economy into focus for the region, you know, at a real consumer level. And we're really excited about this. We are working with a firm in Cambridge called Cambridge 7. They're an architectural design firm. They did the Gloucester Harbor Walk. And uh, they're, they're also, they, and they have a, a cadre of people that they work with as well. So the design process has, has been really interesting. And these, these front porches, I mean, you're seeing the large version of it, but it's, they're basically cubes that can be, could be one cube, two cubes, three cubes in size, or it could just be a panel, or it could be something be even smaller. So we have a kit of parts that we're doing. We figure we have a budget for about 15 or 20 installations throughout the region. But the idea of this is that once we're done with this first phase, there's nothing stopping. So as a publicly funded project, it, they have to go on public land. So uh, whether it's town land, county land, federal land, state land, they have, that's where they have to go. But that doesn't stop. You know, if Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution says, hey, listen, we want one of these on our property. Great, go. Here's, here's the kit of parts. Here's what it would cost you to do that. You can put that there and you become part of the network. You get your stories up into the, onto the website and going forward. So we're in the design process for this. Uh, we hope to have um, these begin to install these in the fall of 2020. So about a, about a year from now or a little less. Hopefully a year from now we'll be done if all goes well. From the Voyager satellite photograph taken six million miles away, Carl Sagan referred to our Earth and home as the pale blue dot. Blue is a color that not only surrounds us, but sustains and defines us. Zooming into the Cape Cod region, water drives the economy. Everywhere you look, you see the blue economy, from the oyster farms in Cape Cod Bay and commercial fishing fleets in Plymouth, Chatham, Menemsha, and Provincetown, to the ferries in Hyannis, the boatyards in Pocasset, and groundbreaking scientific exploration and innovation in Woods Hole. The Cape Cod Blue Economy Project has three main objectives. One, support a vibrant maritime and technology economy. Two, demonstrate how a healthy environment builds healthy economies. And three, develop a prepared and educated workforce. While the Cape Cod region is world renowned for its beautiful beaches and picturesque landscapes, few realize Cape Cod and the islands in nearby Southern Plymouth County are the epicenter of a vibrant water economy with a diverse array of businesses, organizations, and individuals whose livelihoods are inherently connected to the water. The environment is our economy. The Cape region's history is storied, with tales of seafaring explorers, pirates, shipbuilders, whalers, fishermen, and mariners. Since the 1600s, Cape Cod's industries have relied upon the sea for their welfare and survival. Cape Cod's regional blue economy ranges from operations that are directly dependent on the water to those that grow from and support a robust blue economy. The region's educational workforce is derived from high-performing K-12 schools, one of the nation's few maritime academies, and the world's leader in marine science and technology. 
Coupled with a robust cluster of companies and higher education institutions, both on Cape Cod and in the Boston-Cambridge metro area, the Cape Cod region is the epicenter of blue. Cape Cod's young professionals appreciate the region's thriving arts, culture, and culinary scene, along with outdoor activities on over 1,000 miles of coastline, from kite surfing to simply unwinding at the beach. Building on existing sustainable tourism, world-class marine research, and land use planning dedicated to preserving our environment and quality of life, our effort aims for full inclusion with existing economic efforts in the region. So whether you're an entrepreneur investing in your business, a retiree ready to enjoy a new phase of your life, or a young professional seeking opportunity in a forward-thinking community, our region has it. There is a vibrant culture of blue waiting for the next generation of visionary talent to help make this corner of the pale blue dot a thriving resource for other marine-based economies to learn from and flourish. Please join us now. That's a little promo video that we finished uh, about a year and a half ago. And that's it for the formal talk. Can I answer any questions for you? Thank you. Any questions? I got a quick question. Well, okay. You, you and then. Go ahead. No, if you were first, go ahead. Um, this isn't a question, it's more of an idea. Why don't you have an adult career day, not just for kids? I mean, there's plenty of people who are maybe have, have graduated from college and are looking for what to do next. I love that idea. Yeah. I mean, or even us retirees that. Want to do something, you know? Volunteering. Yeah, right. Volunteering too, of course. Um, another idea is um, you, you were talking about the wheelhouse and how you need pe uh, money to move from here to here, and you've got this gap in between. Yes. How about starting a fund, sort of like a GoFundMe page or something, but where you get like shares, you know? So I, I'm not a finance person. I don't know. Mm -hmm. how I, it's already been proposed for them. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that would be a great idea. You know, yeah, we, if we each gave you a thousand dollars, you know, and in, in time it can really grow. Right. Is that is that a commitment? There's plenty of possibilities. Uh, well, this gentleman is hard. I just was going to ask you. Um, has they, have you ever been able to measure the success, we'll say, at retaining the students who live on the Cape and staying on the Cape? Or it seems like I have a couple of nieces and nephews that live down here, and mm -hmm. they can't wait to get out. Right. You know, they're going to school uptown or sure. across the country. But are they going to come back? But that's yeah. That's what I was just going to ask you. Do you do you have anything on how successful you've been at, or you know, they've, they've been at retaining? students to come back. I'm, I'm not sure how we track that, and, and now we just started this, so so the students that we're working with now are the first, are the, are the first cadre that would be there, but it would be great to be able to figure out, you know, <coughs> find out now how many students come back, and then 10 years from now, how many students come back. I love tracking that kind of data. Um, I'm not sure how we do that, but would love to do that if someone has an idea. Um. Bert is on this beautiful presentation, and um, having been involved with a grant um, a committee with the uh, chamber in applying for a federal money for economic development. For um, the Blue Wheelhouse. Yeah, through the Wheelhouse. I per was on um, one of the review teams. Um, it, you're really selling yourself short, and I want my neighbors and friends to know this um, committee that you have done through the chamber not only polled all of the businesses around in, in the blue economy, but they also contacted a lot of business owners who are behind this 100%. And um, they also have, because of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, some untapped technology that is so vital, not only going to be for our economy, it's also with our defense, that you've got big defense contractors just breathing down their neck. So it's all coming together and um, it has been my understanding talking to the regional um, economic development director from Washington says that you have the grant. We, I hopefully they'll they'll make that formal announcement soon uh, to Leslie. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a symposium that was held in October over at University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. 
So be aware that Cape Cod, as much as they're promoting what's going on here, they're also promoting all the way from Plymouth all the way over to Fall River. And UMass Dartmouth has a tremendous engineering department. They have an incubator in Fall River. Um, Plymouth has an uh, incubator that is fully sponsored and underwritten a great deal by the Navy Warfare Department. Um, that is a whole side that you didn't really mention, protecting our coast, which is um, a big defense issue. So if anybody would like to see this 87-page <laughs> review um, that the symposium put together to, to the nature of saying how big this is, um, what Cape Cod is doing is, is far more innovative and they have <clears throat> access to more technology through GUI than any of the other, other two initiatives. So it's a real hats off to you and your team. Thank you. I mean, it was just a really well done um, analysis of what Cape Cod needs. Thank you. Thank you. Go. You, you, know, you mentioned about the study of the student, you know, the questionnaire of the sixth to ninth yes. grade. Right. And I, to me, that's very important because I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. You and me both, brother. But the, the fact of the matter is, what are schools, high schools, college, technical, middle schools doing to make students aware of new economy jobs? Because that's really, it's not just quizzing them, it's how do we educate people that this is there? <laughs> so, well, we are doing a career fair. That's what that's what Waterworks is. It's a career fair for 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 the uh, high school students. But we, you know, we're constantly in con conversations with the schools. Uh, there's an organization that's run out of the Cape Cod Community College called the Cape Cod Regional STEM Network. STEM, of course, is science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, so the Regional STEM Network is working with schools at all levels and talking about the blue economy. Uh, I've spoken to many school school administrators about what they're doing. A lot of them have. Um, uh, blue economy related classes. I think Barstool High School has a um, marine biology class specific to marine biology. So there's there are things that are happening. They're, they're very aware of it. They want to be involved. I think our schools are very progressive uh, in this region when it comes to environment and the water environment and opportunities in the blue economy. So I have I have high hopes. Is that both? You had two pieces there. Is that both questions? Well, no one else has. <laughs> <laughs> Why you have the floor, yeah, sir? Then I sit down, we have dinner together, and then, and then I sit down and make notes. <laughs> <laughs> what businesses like to show or share their blue economy stories with tours and presentations? Because, as you know, we're like we're a presentation and a tour kind of group. Yeah. <laughs> so, so last year, I think it was last year, uh, That's what you we had we had a. Um, a series that was actually, we partnered with the Cape Cod Times on a series on, I think we called it What's Blue With You. Um, and, and again, all the stories are on our website. If you go to bluecapecod.org uh, and there's a, a section under uh, What's Blue and some of those blue stories. We did about a dozen blue stories, everything from Nick Muto, who's a commercial fisherman. Um, I believe we did Yuki Hanzo from uh, the Play Labs. Uh, you know, different people, you know, in the blue economy and, and talking about their story and, what, and what's there. So, so, so yes, we are working that. Uh, and also the study, the, the perception and intention survey for grade six through nine is on the website. So if you want to go and look at the results for that, um, it's written in very studious manner. So there's an executive summary at the beginning. So you can read that and get the gist of it as opposed to reading the, you know, other 30 or 40 pages. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm also, I was just appointed to a committee called the Community Engagements Committee in Bourne, um, and they had $50,000 to basically do some sort of thing to bring people into Bourne or, you know, the people who already live here. Mm -hmm. How do I, I find that? <laughs> I think that th this really ties in very well, mm -hmm. that. and Glenn Cannon's boss is on it too. So okay. I think, um, but we, if we can come up with some sort of an event or something that would mm -hmm. bring people into Bourne and also, you know, promote the blue economy, I think that would be a great time. Sure. sure. Will you take my card and, yes. and, mm -hmm. and touch base with mm -hmm. me on that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, we're everybody's brainstorming now. So, you know, you have community farms in the earth. Yes. You have, like, community agriculture farms for people can plot. You know, I'm, 
I don't pretend to know everything about aquaculture, but um, you know, my understanding is is that you, you go out and you get a grant to go out and and farm. and farm. Yes, the yeah, aqua farm. Uh, in fact, there's an issue right now. Uh, somebody is proposing. I think somebody from Off Cape is proposing how grants um, work, and that once you have a grant, that you own it and that you can sell it. And there's the, the Wealthy Shellfish Association is opposed to that because they feel that with that, that's just going to kind of commoditize the grants, mm -hmm. and then therefore, you know, larger, larger because there's so much money, large corporations follow the money, and that eventually the locals would lose control of the aquaculture industry and it would not afford opportunity for uh, young new aquaculturists to come in and have an opportunity to, to participate. Yes ma'am. Um, <clears throat> where is wastewater fitting into the blue economy? <laughs> wastewater is a, is a huge part of the blue economy and you know, the chamber has been working on wastewater for a decade. You know, we were part of a group called the Smarter Cape Partnership for a number of years. Uh, it was the five major regional organizations, the, the uh, chamber, the Tech Council, Open Cape, Economic Development Council, and the Cape Cod Commission. And we had our first Smarter Cape Summit in 2011 at Fawcett in Harwich. And focusing on broadband deployment through Open Cape and also wastewater. It was like one of the first big regional symposiums on wastewater. So wastewater is a huge part of that. Um, there's a company called uh, Aquagen that, I don't know if you saw something, there was something like with red laser lights and there was like green algae turning in the video. Um, so Aquagen has a, a closed loop system using algae to process wastewater. So this is a new technology that they're developing right here on Cape Cod. It's a much smaller footprint than your traditional wastewater treatment plant. And the idea is that you could use something like this for uh, like a condominium complex or something like that. Uh, and it's the energy that it uses is much less. And if you get Brian in here to talk about it, he'll, he'll take you to another planet with it. Uh, but he's, it's really amazing what the possibilities are with this. So they've started getting some funding from uh, an Israeli investor. And so I'm hoping that that's something that's going to take off and be around that. But I think, you know, in terms of opportunity, there's so many things that we as a coastal community are vulnerable to. It's wastewater, sea level rise. All these things are things that are ground zero for us and maybe less than ground zero when the water comes up a little bit. Um, and there's, op there's entrepreneurial opportunity to solve those problems. And one thing that makes us different from other coastal areas in the world is the, the technology and innovation piece that we have here and the research piece. We've got Wittol Oceanographic Institute. We've got Marine Biological Labs. Uh, right up the street, we have MIT. There, we have a culture of innovation in this region which is unsurpassed in any other coastal area in the world. So we've got the, cap, we've got the, we've got the, like, the building blocks for a real opportunity for environmental entrepreneurialism here. Does that answer your question? A little bit. Well, yes. with the uh, with Hui and and also with the relationship developing with uh, uh, UMass Dartmouth, because UMass Dartmouth has a major engineering department and they're turning this focus from the whole university to mm -hmm. the oceans, not only for um, underwater discovery to various machinery and devices like wastewater reclamation. Mm -hmm. They can engineer this and they're talking about having a similar type of thing which would be like an ocean lab versus a media lab. Everything will be, you know, let, let people get in there and tinker and so right. It's coming. Well, and I think they're starting to do that, the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship in Fall River. Which yeah. is, that's the... Well, that's affiliated with the... With UMass. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the assistant dean runs it. <coughs> right, right. So there's a lot that's happening in that in that area. I just, I have a couple of questions for, and then we do need to wrap up. Sure. So, um, first of all, thank you very much. And well, I'm thank, looking, thank. looking forward to maybe um, follow-up conversations with you in 
terms of finding ways to tap into some of these centers of excellence where we might follow up with a speaker from who mm -hmm. talking specifically about X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. um, shell fishing on its own is a whole topic. Sure. Wastewater management. Um, so if I could um, follow sure. up with you on that. That's pick, my first question. Pick, pick my brain. Sometimes it's okay. slim pickings. But. <laughs> the other thing is, um, and I don't want to end this as a, as a Debbie Downer, but um, you're going to go. I'm going to we're, we're going to switch it to an opportunity. Okay, whatever an opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> so I love all the forward thinking and where are we going and what are we building on. Is there an aspect of this related to the wastewater that is preventative? If you think of the what ifs, the seas rising, the contamination, the algal blooms and stuff. I know that's part of the education, but does the blue economy have a branch that's like, how do we prevent these things from happening here? You know, we are we're waving the blue economy flag, and others are others are are marching alongside with us. I want to say I don't want to say behind us; they're marching with us. So there's an organization here on the Cape called the Cape Cod Climate Change Collaborative. Um, and so if you're talking about sea level rise, what are things that we can do here in Cape Cod? Well, we can reduce our car carbon emissions. Um, that's one of their big focuses. Uh, they have, they just had their, their second net zero conference at the resort conference center uh, back in September. They had 200 stakeholders from around the region talking about things that we as Cape Codders can do about this. And it's, it's you know, it's so, so getting, you know, Rich Delaney, who's also runs the uh, Center for Coastal Studies in Provincetown, getting Rich Delaney or Mon Cochran to come speak to some of the things that they're doing, you know, that, there is that. Um, and, you know, there's some harsh realities to, to, to climate change and sea level rise. You know, there's the horrible hurricane they just, they just had in the Bahamas. Yeah. And one, you know, one of the smaller islands was basically leveled. And the governor was saying, I'm not sure we should rebuild here again. Because the reality is, is that it's going to happen all over again. And so we need to be thinking about how we're developing along the coast and building and if we're going to build on the coast, that we build in a resilient way, resilient way that is going to take into account the fact that the oceans are going to rise and there's going to be more erosion and, we, and it's going to be a challenge. And that's, that really is the, the point I was trying to make. Yeah. How do we, right. what can be prevented? I guess is more right. like it. So any additional questions, Bert? So again, I thank you very much for coming. Right. Thank, thank you all very much. You've been